Did you just accidentally blow up your arm? Is the stick in your hand acting weird? Or does saying certain words cause strange, unwanted things to happen? Well, I am sorry to inform you that either you just hit puberty, or worse, you've unlocked your magical potential. In the event it's just puberty, I'll refer you to your parents, assuming they are still alive, but if you're certain it's magic, then we have just the thing you need. With a lot of off-screen magic practice and this guide brought to you by the Ministry of Paranormal Defense, we will teach you everything we think you need to know how to master your own magic. Before we start, due to the inherently chaotic nature of magic and how it always breaks the fundamental laws of physics, we will assume that you, the listener, are just an average magic user with no prior knowledge and that your magical abilities are of your own or that you can conjure up magic in any other way. In the event you are surrounded by magic-wielding individuals but are unable to use it yourself, we advise you to listen to our other guide, How to Become a Supervillain. Now, on to the guide. Before we start, it's important to note that magic users can often be divided into two groups. Do you use a staff, a wand, or any other external device to cast magic? Then you fit into the first category, device magic. If you fit into this category, you'll start to develop an asexual relationship with a magical device of your choosing that has most likely chosen you as well. This is completely normal. This magic expelling device will from now on be your partner in life and your own life will depend on it. The moment you lose access to your magic partner, it's recommended to forget you have any other weapons at your disposal and become completely useless without it. Under no circumstances should you ever try to do anything without your wand. However, as a reward for staying loyal to your wand, long-time magic users can upgrade their wand into a staff, which can be used to stab people. Just mm, act like it's your phone and keep your magic device on you at all times. Now, there are rare instances where a person does not require a wand or a magical book to use magic. Instead, they use an unknown sign language, Latin-sounding words, or other practices that require no external items like speaking backwards. This is classified as hands-free magic. Though, despite its name, we don't recommend it while driving. Although this strain of magic might sound appealing, this method is often trickier to pull off and requires a lot more skill. When you're in this strain of magic, you're most likely using the magic inherent to your world through runes, praying, or making flashy hand motions. Don't worry about it, champ. This type of magic is considered one of the easiest ones. Just uh, don't mispronounce any names. Now, each form of magic has countless nonsensical rules that in no way conform to any aspect of reality. Because of this, you might feel overwhelmed, but there is no need to stress. Just like studying for a test, half of what you learn in magic will be irrelevant anyway. For your convenience, we have pinpointed the three rules of magic every person should know. They work across the board with most magic problems. So, understanding these three principles of magic is key to mastering magic itself. Rule 1. Break the rules. During your journey of becoming a mage, you might learn certain rules of magic you should never break, lest you meet a terrible fate. Although this advice is probably given in good faith, it's completely wrong. Thorough research shows that as long as you are the main character, breaking any magical laws is fine and you'll be praised for it, and even given a Nobel Prize. So don't be afraid of experimenting with it. Rule 2. Don't break rules. As you learn about your specific strain of magic, you'll most likely hear of dark magic. You might wonder if it's correct to disregard an entire branch of magic just because of a perceived connotation, and you might want to experiment with it to learn about any ethical implications dark magic can serve. We, however, advise against this practice unless you plan for murder, world domination, or you are ugly. You should never dabble with dark magic. Now, on to the final and most important rule of magic. Rule 3. The rule of cool. Magic's most consistent law might be the rule of cool. Multiple studies on magic have concluded that the cooler a magical spell looks, the more powerful it is, sometimes even the opposite. Yes, you heard that right. The power of magic does not depend on the involved parties, magic ingredients, or the magic itself. Rather, how flashy it is? How preposterous. Does your spell move slow and does it have a lot of colors? In that case, it will be extremely powerful. 
plus point if you can somehow get magical symbols and apparitions to appear in your spell. The exact workings of the spell are completely irrelevant. As long as it looks dramatic, you will steal the show. Still not as powerful as a missile, though. Now, you might wonder how to deal with magical combat. Well, there's spellcasting, magic schools, magical creatures, or arcane magic that is intertwined with the world you live in. And considering your life might depend on this, you for sure would love to get some answers. You probably have many questions, but with as many things in magic, we won't answer a single one of your questions. And that's the final lesson for today. This guide has been put together by the Ministry of Paranormal Defense in collaboration with the Department of All Magical Nonsense. This was your captain speaking. Just try not to blow yourself up and communications. Timeline has been lost. Any star date now. <laughs>